When I think about the future of Linux desktops in general with new users coming over, I often always try and recommend usually Bazite. Now, why do I recommend that? Well, I would say Bazite has kind of standed out as a distro that can be installed on like basically any device. And I mean, Linux in general can be like that. But one of the great things about Bazite is that it's an immutable distro. And that's what I've been thinking a lot lately. And I even saw another video by another popular Linux YouTuber who was also talking about immutable distros and he was thinking like is it the future and I was like hey I was gonna make a video which is the video I'm making right now about immutable distros and how I think immutable distros are kind of the future of Linux desktop I would say when it comes to a normal user wanting to install Linux on a computer or even companies for example wanting to install a Linux distro on a laptop and then sell that laptop to a user it could be extremely easy to deploy a immutable distro and I'll go into why. Well, why do I say this exactly? Why do I say that immutable distros are the future? Well, when you think of like a regular Windows user or a Mac user, for example, usually they don't really have that much control over the directory. They have some control over it, but basically Microsoft and Apple, they take care of their users in the root directory stuff with updates and all that, because most users don't really care about specific updates that are rolling out necessarily. They may care about desktop updates and such, but when it comes to the core components of like customizing that most users don't want to touch that mostly because they're afraid to do that and I think what's good about mutable distros is that well the root directory is on read only and this is one of the reasons why I think immutable distros are the future is that it's read only so the user when they go to install a distro like Bazite for example if you go to my desktop here or like Fedora Kino Knight uh, I think that's how you say it uh, you just you, know, you install the distro you start installing specific packages from the store and then you have your user home directory which the user can customize and change however they want but they don't get to touch the root directory necessarily there is ways of touching the root directory but it isn't the main way of like installing an application now some people may think this is a like a bad thing that you just you, oh, you can't touch the root directory you can't install system applications so this is kind of like a bad thing but you have to kind of think about the end user the normal user who is just going to like let's say a couple years down the line wants to buy a laptop laptop with Linux on it, it has an immutable distro installed, they don't know anything about that. All they want to do is they want to install some applications and be on their way. They want to go on their browser, they want to open up Steam, and they want to play some video games. Well, when it comes to an immutable distro, you don't really need access to the root directory necessarily. Sure, there might be some nitpicky things you can point out, but when it comes to the general user, the user who literally just wants to go on their browser, who wants to open up maybe OBS Studio like I'm doing right now, who wants to open up Discord or whatever chatting application and play some video games, I think immutable distros like are the way, honestly. And like I said, one of the great things about an immutable distro is that you have these different, you could say images is what they like to call them usually. Well, you'll have like two images. You'll have the image that you're using right now, like your main one that it will boot into. And then you have a second image, which is a backup. So if something goes wrong, you can boot into that second image at boot because there's a grub screen that will usually come up where you can boot into that second image so that well, you can just continue to use your computer. And then, you can even replace that image that you're on, that backup image, and then put on the new one, which is your one you're on right now, which is the backup image, and make that one the main image. So when it comes to the freedom of like stability wise, it can be extremely good just based off that feature alone. Now I know you can say, oh, you can use other tools for that type of stuff, but by default on system distros that you install, I know some like Arch based distro or, or just regular Fedora or whatever, you don't have that stuff set up. And when it comes to to a normie user who wants to try and set up those type of tools, it's going to be quite difficult for them to learn how to do that. And this is why I like immutable distros is because it's already set up for you and how it works with all the images. It's really nice when it comes to the stability. So this can be a good thing and a bad thing depending on the user. And uh, it's that you have to use Flatpak and app image for your packages. Now, yes, you can install system packages. It is on read only with the root system, but you 
chain layer packages is the sense where you use the rpm os tree command but those are terminal commands so usually the normie user they're just going to install a flat pack package from their gui store or download a dot app image from whatever github repo of whatever package they're trying to install now for me personally i don't really mind i have steam on bazai and that is a layered package so it is a system package but mostly everything else is flat pack and i was using the um, flat pack steam version on the fedora kinonite because i actually installed this distro first to try this out and i extremely liked it it was very nice all the updates were in the gui store you could grab your um your packages uh, your flat pack packages from the gui store it wasn't anything you had to do with the terminal you didn't have to touch the terminal at all and it was read only so you were kind of just like forced in this one direction and i think that's pretty good again it's a pretty good thing to have where you basically have two choices for installing packages which is kind of similar to windows like windows has .exe but they also have like .msi and some other packages you can use to install packages but it's really good that like i would say your middle distro is like going down this path where they're forcing the user to use two packages and like sure you can layer packages if you want to be an advanced user which can break your system with the whole atomic updates so it's kind of like a scary thing to do it may break it's i would say it's just a good thing that it's going down this direction i know some people are not going to like this direction and that's the good thing about linux it gives you choice for what you want to do so you can choose a, a distro that isn't immutable and you can just uh, muck around with it customize it break it however you like but i think for again for the normal user this is the path for a linux distro to be installed on a laptop for example to be sold to a user and also i wanted to bring up some of the distros like i was talking about fedora kinonite there's also bazite which i know like this has been gaining a lot of popularity because it's a gaming distro but it's also it's got like steam os installed into it so it makes it really versatile when it comes to installing it on a handheld device it just it kind of just works out of the box honestly and the way it updates also it's really easy this is a simple application you launch which is this one it's going to look at the um, system tree and it's going to pull that image in it's going to update it and then also if you have any distro boxes set up which is kind of the container base of setting up different distros inside of a container you can update that and it's literally just does all the updates in here and i think this is really good a distro like bazite is is probably the reason why it's gaining so much popularity it's just because you know it can be installed on really any type of device and we can see you know a lot of youtubers also testing out bazite i know there was one youtuber i was watching recently he was building different pcs and installing bazite on it and then testing games out on it and he's really enjoyed it and i also wanted to bring up about like kd neon for example kd neon is if you don't know is the kd plasma distro linux distro that they maintain so you get the latest kd plasma updates but the problem with this distro is that it's under the hood it's based on a old ubuntu i think it's a ubuntu lts release and it's had a lot of problems where they've tried to like backport packages and when kd plasma 6 launched uh, kd neon had a bunch of bugs and it was kind of a nightmare for the KDE developers to fix I think it only took like a couple of days for them to fix it so it wasn't that bad but it's just like KDE Neon has had usually a bad rep and I don't really recommend it because of its like issues that it's had in the past but specifically the KDE developers they know themselves that it's not really the best option for running the latest version of KDE Plasma and that's where they've decided to work on a KDE it's called KDE Linux at the moment but it is a immutable KDE Plasma distro and it's based on arch and uh it seems to be going pretty well i watched a um, presentation by this guy which was harold and he talked about it and he was like you know we're doing a lot of stuff and they want people to like start contributing and they don't really know if this is going to be the name right now but it's another thing where it's really good to see that there's other distros that are you know other entities that are deciding to make in the mutable distro because it's kind of the way forward how you can just like deploy images on the go really if you want to update like for example i was on fedora kinonite i wanted to move to bazite and bazite has instructions for doing a rebase so you can rebase to bazite and it went perfectly all i did is i, I did the command which rebased it it removed all of like kinonite's packages all of it how it was set up and then it replaced all those packages with bazite's own packages i rebooted i went into the new bazite image and i was running bazite so it's really cool how you can like just deploy these images and I know these images are quite big in size because you're basically downloading like I'm pretty sure you're downloading a whole new ISO size so when it comes to how fast you can download updates it's not that bad but it, it is a lot more than if you had a Linux distro that was just doing individual package updates 
And as I said, with deploying these images, it might be a lot easier for, let's say, a laptop company or computer company like Dell, for example, to install a immutable style Ubuntu based distro. And it's got like, I don't know, Snap pre-installed, which as we all know, lots of people don't like Snap, me included, I don't like Snap. But besides that, it'd be really cool how a company like Dell could start selling laptops with an immutable distro. And if something went wrong, for example, they could just ask you Ubuntu for that newest image that they could just download and deploy to all their users. The user, all they have to do is just reboot into that new image. And all it does is it replaces the root directory with that new image that they boot into. And then whatever problem that we're having is now solved. Instead of having to do these individual package updates, which might cause other little problems, deploying like this image-based system is an extremely stable thing, I would say, when it comes to just updating. Now, I guess the last thing would be not every application has adapted to Flatpak or app image yet. So it's kind of one of these things like a Go Overlay, for example, is one that I can think of right off the bat because there's no Flatpak version. You have to set up Manga HUD manually with a config file or it's where like with Bazite, they have layered Steam as a system package. So then they installed Go Overlay also as a system package. So then you can customize Manga HUD with that Go Overlay. Now for me, if I had like a second PC, like I used to had like a year ago, I would be using Bazite on that PC because, you know, I don't really want to do anything on that PC. I may want to run a simple maybe game server, like a Valheim server with mods or something installed, and then maybe run a Jellyfin server for movies and TV shows that I legally own. And then that would be it really. I wouldn't really touch that computer because I'm not really testing anything that are newer packages, but with this main system that I'm running right now, I would be installing an Arch-based system probably or a Fedora-based system and then testing out new desktop environments like the Cosmic development. I have been running the um, Cosmic Git version. So when it comes to like some system packages, yeah, I'm going to have to use like not an immutable distro because I want to do bug reporting and, and test out games on newer desktop environments, which as I will and other immutable distros will have Cosmic soon. So I probably won't have to do that at some point. Like I probably will be able to just like install Bazite with the Cosmic desktop and then be on my way and just start doing testing on that. So that's really the end of the video. I would like to know your thoughts about immutable distros. And if you think it's the future of um, Linux desktop for normal uh, people that want to test out Linux, but that don't really know the knowledge of like terminal commands, even though you don't have to use terminal commands these days as much, just people don't really know the knowledge knowledge of a system-based version or not an immutable distro, I would like to know your thoughts about that. So if you did enjoy this video, definitely give it a like, definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, I would really appreciate that. And um, thank you to my members also, I really do thank you guys for giving me money every month, I really do appreciate it, it means a lot to me. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video, peace.